This is Wow! What, what, what a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Shit up. <laughs> So, in our part of the world, when someone says a bra helped them get work, they're usually referring to a friend who assisted. When our next guest says that, she means it literally. Please give a wow welcome to Wazi M. Kunene. (laughs) Best newcomer at the Comics Choice Awards. What does that even mean? Oh man, it means that you are the best of the new gang. And how do you even get there? Like, how, how do I get to be best newcomer? Oh man, a lot of stage time, a lot of uh, proactive work, a lot of getting better at what you do, a lot of going around, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of getting into the industry and being noticed by other comics. But we're going to rewind just a little bit uh, and then we'll come back to how your bra um, helped (laughs) you get a job and come back to where we are right now. Take us back to Maritzburg. Tell us about life in Maritzburg. Tell us about the girl that was you. You know what, I, I really was hoping that I'd get to interviews and say really wonderful things about Peter Marisbeck. But when I wo- won, I won my award, yeah. I, I made a statement and I said to Peter Marisbeck, I'm giving you guys 24 hours to put together billboards, <laughs> my surprise billboards, or else. And they didn't say anything. So okay. like, I'm up for grabs. Anything he wants me, like, I'm up for grabs. Oh, so you're available. I'm available. You're, available. You're, you're on the market. I'm on the market. How, on the market. how, how good is your Setswana? <laughs> I can learn. I can learn. I'm good. Like I'm good. I'm good to go. Like for like right now, Graham Sam, you can take me. Uh, Joe Wick can take me. Any any place can take me. You often say you were not raised in uh, Maritzburg. You're traumatized in Peter Maritzburg. Yeah, I was. Uh, how? Um, it all began when uh, I was born. Yeah. Um, without my consent. You know. Yes, yes, yes. So we we were often never asked if we want to even. We all just now now I'm here, guys. Uh, what's happening? No, I'm just here. That is where we enter crying. Yeah. You don't understand that we enter it's this world. It's traumatizing being born. Like, why am I here? Why? Like, guys, I was just chilling there by myself in my little pool, my warm pool, and then I'm out here and I have to pay bills now. Twirling your umbilicus. I know, like it's swinging along, <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm here. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was traumatized uh, in Peter Marisbeck because, like, I I didn't enjoy much my my childhood. Mm. I really actually feel like I'm now in my childhood because oh. in my childhood I had to do a lot of adulting. So now, 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 when, like, were you a co-parent? I was. I was a co-parent, a single parent, you know, <laughs> to myself sometimes, like, mm. and it was exhausting. So now I'm like I'm getting into my teen years freely. Would you say a childhood like that forces you to almost create your own world in your mind? And that's how you ended up being a creative, perhaps? I think so. Um, just out of, just out of um, safety and uh, just to relieve yourself from the actual world that you're in all the time that mm-hmm. you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely it's, imagination is, is your home, mm-hmm. is your home. And then now you, you make it your living. But you're also a suicidal teen. That 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 is not a nice. DJ Fresh in Daba Zam Pam Wabad. I'm sorry. Uh, I was, if, if if it helps, I was also a suicidal teen when I was fifteen. Yeah. And, and 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 it's not a nice place to be at. But the reason I'm asking you about it is because increasingly a lot of kids growing up in the era of yeah. now yeah. are going through a lot. I wasn't suicidal throughout my teen years, yeah. but I remember the first time I really was not down to be here. Like I was really overwhelmed mm. and I went to school and I did not want to speak to anyone. I thought to myself, I'm just going to be quiet the whole day. Mm. And that day, um, one of my friends said to me, uh, are you not going to speak today? Like, are yeah. you not going to make sure. us laugh today? Mm. And since then, I've been postponing my suicide because, you know, I've found myself having a responsibility mm. and having a place in this world is to make people laugh. So at that point, though, on that day where yeah. you felt that I'm enough with this place, yeah. what was going through your, your head that day? I was just exhausted with, mm. uh, with, just, with just my life, man. I had to make a plan. Mm. And like a lot of the times I had to make, like I had a great grandmother who mm. worked really hard, mm. but like I had to make a plan for myself. Like I had throughout my high school, I sold sweets at school illegally mm. just so that I can have transfer money to go to school. Oh, wow. And it was, it was really just it tiring. Was it, was it was a hassle. Was it a hassle. I went to school to sell at school. Mm. If I had to drop out, then I'd lose business. Mm. So it was just a stressful thing in my mind. But like um, I found, I found a way to live through it. And also that humor 
made me a person who's important amongst my friends. I was going to say, so you, 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 your girls at school say, how you're not going to make us laugh today. Yeah. What made you feel like I have a place in the yeah, society? Yeah, definitely. I have a place, I have a purpose, yeah. and um, nothing is just for waste. I'm, sure. I'm a human being and I matter. And then you end up at Rhodes. Yeah. Doing what at Rhodes? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to do at Rhodes Fresh. There's a lot to do, okay? A- apart from the ice bar in at the DP at four in the morning. <laughs> Why else were you in, uh, okay. in, in Grahamstown? Skipping around those two streets. I was just, you know, just <laughs> skipping around those two streets. I need a beer. I need a pie. Yeah. I need a beer. I need a pie. <laughs> um, I ended up at, at Rhodes. Um, I, was, I was actually just looking for a place very far that I could, that I could go to. And uh, when I was in matric uh, at 16, I managed with my money. I managed to get uh, application forms and found my way to, to Rhodes. Mm-hmm. And that was a very great moment. I'm still very proud of, of myself. So you qualified as what? I qualified to do uh, a BA. Mm-hmm. I was doing television journalism and psychology. Okay. And yeah, I uh, left that all behind. But, but you also act. I do. Like, so I do. There's, there's various assets to Wazi. I do, guys. It's just uh, uh, I get unemployed quite often that side. <laughs> but I'm out here. I can dance right now. There's a lot of space here. Uh, fresh, whatever, whatever, guys. But we, we don't have a budget, but we can pay you with good coffee, though. I'm really disappointed that this is just coffee. What are you thinking or hoping it was? No, 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 you're at the wrong podcast. Uh, Mac G will still call me <laughs> if you're not drink. I was just like, mm. <laughs> I, thought this was a, I thought this was a celebration of my award. Like, what's going on? You thought it was coffee. I thought it was, you know, with bubbles and stuff. <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, but like, yeah, man, there's this space here. There's, you know, if you want someone to sing, uh, yeah. I'm available. If you want someone to... Uh, <laughs> Guys, she's been selling sweets since she was in uh, high school. So she's always hustling to make a buck. <laughs> I'm always ready, always ready and always like... The struggles of being an actor in a country that actually doesn't fully appreciate actors. Tell us about that. I get so sad when, you know, when you're now in the thing, yeah. and you realize that uh, this is not a respected thing. It's not. Because even... You guys are paid shit. That, you guys are paid yeah. rubbish. Or not paid, if, and if you're, because if I'm not working yes. with acting now. Um, but like with stand up as well, it's like I love stand up so much, mm-hmm. and you know, I know there's a lot of people who love stand up. But then you get into the industry, and you just also learn that you know, South Africa does not revere stand up that much. So it's the not hustle, a culture. It's, it's not, not a culture. A culture. Yeah. Yeah. So it's difficult to to you know to to make your name here and to sell just stand up. Mm-hmm. It's difficult. But I think it's something worth doing. Is that why you're as multifaceted as you are? I don't know, man. That's 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 God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's God. But I am I am privileged to be myself. Mm. You know, sometimes I have to remind myself when things are not going as well. Sure. I have to remind myself that I'm actually privileged to be me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm I'm really happy to be myself. Mm-hmm. Now, one of our you can't make this shit up stories. Um, <laughs> there's a woman who tattooed her eyeballs. Oh. And admits her look is extreme, but she loves it. Tattooed like what? She tiny ta- she ta- dollar like size. She put color into her, eye- her, her eyeballs. Oh, inside. Eyeballs. Ooh. How far have you gone for vanity? Look at me. Yeah? I have gone nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> nowhere. I'm out here with dreadlocks that made themselves. Nowhere. Or oh, dreadlocks made from just... Ah, uh, just did it for me timing. Just, <laughs> it's like, oh, what can we do? Let us tie ourselves, guys. Look at me right now. Look at me right This is me in my full bone vanity lipstick. <laughs> Come on, guys. What have I done? And I'm sure it was from someone who was walking past yeah, me. Like, oh, my gosh, I have an interview today. Fresh. <laughs> I'm in some, I'm in some. <laughs> Something I haven't done much. What could I do? I don't know, man. Maybe um, I think my C cups are, are quite okay. Okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't notice. Uh, I've been looking straight in your eyes. It is, it is C cups, guys. Just in case a lot of people are just asking themselves. And for those that need to understand, C cups are a cup away from backache all the time. <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I think I've got a strong back to carry that. So oh, so you could go a cup. Bring up. it on, whoever. W- would you get work done? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. After maybe if, if I have a house, yeah. after having a house and then you, working, then we'll extend the rest. Of then we can extend the rest <laughs> of me. Like if I could build a house with, uh, then we can start talking. Yeah, building other things. I don't know. Women in comedy. I'd strengthen my knees, maybe. Yeah, 
yeah. Why? But that's not for me. That's just for now. Just <laughs> whoever I'm riding. <laughs> that's not for me. So no, 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 not my knees. What can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Women in comedy. Yeah. Versus men in comedy. Who is allowed to get away with more on stage in terms of what do they talk about and the gags, etc.? Yo, um, I'd be lying if I say I know who because I feel like right now, because mm. I'm only also coming to the space right now, yes, yes, I feel like yes. right now, women and men are really, I know I talk about a lot of dangerous things. Sure. And how, how risque is your comedy? Where do you go? Where do you take pretty it? Pretty risque. Yeah. As, as risky as you want to imagine. I know there are some things I've been told not to say in this year home. No, 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 no dude, feel, feel but at like, home. No, like, yeah. You're just, a guest, um, feel at home. I, I, I don't even want to use the word risky, but like, I just feel like I speak on the times. Like, sure. if the times want us to talk about abortion, I'll speak about abortion. Mm-hmm. If the times want us to speak about uh, being gay, I'll speak about being gay. So I don't think that um, I'm risky. I'm just reflecting mm-hmm. the, the times that we're in. But, but the times we're in are also... I think we're at our most sensitive as a human race. Yeah. Like we're at our most. Oh, yes. We've never been so sensitive in the history of hu- human beings and the history of comedy. Because we haven't, before, we haven't touched on certain things. It's yeah. not that they were not there, mm. but there was no time or reason to be sensitive about them mm. because no one was speaking about them at that time. Um, men are sensitive about women talking about men and money. Mm. So it wasn't a matter then because there wasn't much you know, spoken about it then. But now a lot of women are voicing up and speaking up about like, uh, I'm fine with not being married. Mm. And so a lot of people are sensitive then only now because it's only spoken about now. Mm-hmm. But I don't think the right now there are things that uh, men can speak about that women can't speak about. But I do think there are things that we may touch on the same topics, men and women, mm-hmm. but audiences receive it differently yes, because yes, they yes. still um, are, are okay about a man speaking about anything. But for a woman, it's like, ah, Wazi, come on, put yourself together. <laughs> Have you had a situation like that where you realize that had a man t- done the gag you just did, it would have been a yeah. different response? I personally, I personally have not, yeah. but I know with the laughs, yeah. some rooms yeah. where you're like, I know that maybe if I was a white man, they'd receive me better. Yeah, and that's be more also, raucous. Yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be more, it'd be more like, you know, oh, yeah, oh. kind of thing. But like, not exactly. But I've been at a tavern, yeah. hey, these gigs. <laughs> I've been at a tavern. The girl's gonna work, the girl's gonna work. I've been at a where men stood up and said, I'm shedding up a fuzz, me. I was like, okay, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm so sorry. Damn these sea cups. Because if you know, without them, he wouldn't have noticed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what gag worked in that environment, though? Because clearly, you know, it was a tough crowd. I mean, like, other people are laughing. I'm not going to focus on this one guy who's uncomfortable with his sexuality. Like, he needs to go outside and sort himself out. You know, bouncer. Oh, there's no bouncers in the tub, but, like, <laughs> he needs to go outside and go get another go to. But, like, yeah. other people are enjoying. So I'm not going to focus on, on one thing. I know our minds want to focus on the one negative thing, but, like, sure. there are things happening here. Mm-hmm. What's happening or happened in your life that has become a source of your comedy? I think the way that my my life is and mm. the way that my life began. Sure. Um, I know a lot of people at the awards, I was telling people that, you know, I'm the first woman to win this in the whole decade of these awesome biggest comedy yes. awards. And that's best newcomer, by best the way, newcomer. if you are a newcomer. Right? <laughs> and I was, you know, I was, I was making a joke telling people that, you know, I'm the first woman to do this. But like, I don't I come from women who are first at many things. Like my mother was the first woman in my neighborhood mm. to be um to leave her children so like i'm the first my grandmother was the first is one of the only women who built a house by herself so i come from women who are first at everything and people mm. they're just like that's too dark i'm like but that's my story my yes. mother left me she was the first and i was like yeah go mama go to your thing <laughs> go do your thing you know how, how old were you when mama left i think if i remember properly i was i think a few months old Jeez, okay Mm, I'm not really sure, like memory mm. at that time. And then, and, and then your relationship with her? Is like I know, her? yeah, I know, her, I know her now. Like we have a soft relationship. It's still, mm. it's still a bit distant, but like, yeah, I know, I know, I know where she is. I know her. Is she proud of the woman you've become? 
I hope so. Like I'm proud of. Is she aware of the woman you're becoming? I think. Uh, yeah, I think she is. She she does. She follows me on Instagram. Mm. Right. <laughs> oh, all right. So yeah. you're like you're like Doja Cat. <laughs> My dad follows me on Instagram. Yeah, she follows. She follows me on Instagram. I had to be like, who is this? Who is this woman? Who yeah. is this? I'm like, yeah, she does. Who keeps saying go on again? <laughs> go on again. <laughs> Girl, am I? Like, I, I? I know I didn't raise you, but you go, girl. <laughs> this is sounding quite coming out there. <laughs> and then Gogo, how does Gogo feel about? Um, I, I hope she she feels good about it. Uh, mm. She she's she, she's died. She's dead. Oh, okay. Uh, Oops. <laughs> she's died. Uh, you know. Uh, oh, I thought you were gonna play a boo 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 boo. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, why are you touching your computer? No, no, I've got a uh, no, no, I've got a rest in peace jingle. Oh, for. you're looking for it? Yeah, yeah. La, la, she, my grandmother's gone. Um, and you know. I hope she. I hope she's proud there. Like she, she needs to get working now. She's so, been over three years. Like get to work. Like and sisters, come no, on now. But it doesn't work like. That. I no no no. But that, three that, years. That internship is done now. Like degree is done. Let's get to work, go go. Let's get to work. She needs to settle first. Ah, three years. She settle down. Uh, nah, you know. Then she can get. Like work. I understand the first year was quite tricky getting there, trying to like you know propose, put your proposal on, and, and, but like visitations are like chill, chill, but chill. And and find other relatives who are long gone. You know, they're like yeah. we we older than you you know we've been working here now my grandmother's out there at boardroom meetings trying to pitch her ideas but now i think three years is three years is enough let's get to work let's get to work Yo. <laughs> how do you deal with tragedy and loss the tragedy of gogo is gone the tragedy of mom abandoned me when i was a child and i only know her now yeah yeah I mean, like, I think it's an it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. Mm. I can't say this is what I did. I drank these amount of bottles, and then after that, mm. things <laughs> things went well. But I think it's an ongoing process. And the with the death, I uh, I think it's part of life. That's how I receive death. I just I, I just think it's part of life. It's not always a bad thing when someone rests. Mm. You know, mm. it's not always a bad thing when someone rests. So obviously, Gogo raised you and other kids. Yeah. Where are the other kids? Where is my grand lap? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> uh, I have Where, where's Jerry Springer when we need him? <laughs> Jerry Springer also left us. <laughs> uh, we were there. We were alive, man. My aunt is still, is still alive, popping, mm. living it up. Very proud of, of what she's put together for her life. Mm. Uh, my sisters, who are my cousins, are also like around the world. My sister's in Poland. My other sister's in in case they didn't home. All raised by the same Gogo. Yeah. So she did a, a, a stellar job then? She did the best that she could. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. But how has that affected your work ethic in terms of everything that you are doing? Based on seeing this woman who did as much as she could with nothing. Yeah. Obviously inspiring you to do as much as you could yeah. with the little you had at the time. Yeah. And giving you a journey and what it's been. I that you made it to roads. Yeah. Despite everything else. Yeah. You know, you 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 got your qualification. Yeah. Now you're in comedy. You're the best newcomer, the yeah. first woman to win this. Yeah. I think uh, looking at how my grandmother uh, worked hard, doing like di a whole diversity of things, sure. like diverse things. I think it it influenced how you were asking how I do multiple things. Mm. In looking at, I can do many things, or I am many also in one. It really inspired me to just you know try mm. everything that you can. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, you've won the award. <laughs> Does that mean anything in the bigger scheme of things? Does anything change? <laughs> it's been three weeks now, and... Bank balance is still the same. You know... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm looking at this very spacious place. I'm like, I can put a bed here. Yeah. I can put my couches here. <laughs> Come on, DJ French, let's put something together. <laughs> let's put something together. Oh, man, I haven't seen my award since I touched it on, on stage because, you know, um, I looked at the stage, I looked at the audience, and my machonista was there. Mm. And just <laughs> ready to pawn it. Ready to pawn it. I was like... Ah! Let me take pictures at least. <laughs> Let me take pictures at least. It's been three weeks since I won. Life is still quite, quite the same. Quite the same. Like I'm still hustling. I'm still pushing. I'm still doing my shows. I just had a show at the Biscope, celebrating women in comedy. A uh, woman who kill. Mm. Um, you know, I'm still doing the work that I'm doing, and I, I think it's 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 gonna take it's it's a little bit of time to adjust to. So the other work the, you're doing, where do we find this work? Oh man, if you follow me on Instagram, you yeah. can you can see what I do, or okay. you can go to Oxford. University Press and you could order some of the books that I write. I write for children as well. Tell us about these books. 
Um, uh, it's books for children written in Isizulu, so they are distribu distributed in uh, schools that have Isizulu in the okay. curriculum. Mm -hmm. So mainly KZN or uh, uh, Gauteng. Mm. And but you can order them even if you're not in in a school. You can order them. They are part of a curriculum, but you mm. can order them online as well. Does it feel good knowing that you're part of the curriculum? Knowing that uh, you didn't go to school for nothing. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Oh man, I should because because a lot of kids have this degree hanging on mama's wall, and mama is happy. Yeah. But I've moved on. Yeah. But you are putting to use, and positively so, what you went to school for. I think so. I haven't I haven't looked at it like like that because I've been looking at my degree with such angry eyes. But I guess you know I could look at it uh, like that. Mm. I am proud. I am proud of the things that I, as small as they are, sometimes I am mm. proud of the things that I've, you know, I've managed to do in a couple of years. Do you think comedy will become your mainstay anytime soon? I think so. Mm. I think so. I mean, like out of all the things that I do or been doing, comedy has 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 come up top in yes, all, in yes. all the things. Now we had Skumba here um, last week, and this uh, seat has had some people that I love. I've been watching. Uh, yeah, so we had Skumba last week, and uh, you know we're, we're talking about how he got into trouble talking about Fima's Fima's fault, yeah. and how the girls were half naked, and um, you know. So I need to ask you because he apologized. I mean, he was all over the coals yeah. uh, for that comment. Yeah. What are things you feel comedians should never apologize for? And mind you, uh, this was something he put on social media versus what happened on stage, for instance. Yeah. What, should, what shouldn't comedians apologize for? I think comedians shouldn't apologize for something that they believe. Mm. If you say something and you're able to back it up, mm. it might not be the popular thought. Uh, yeah. But if you can back it up, that I don't think you should apologize. Because sometimes you see, you, you read these apologies from, from not just comedians, even artists, mm. when they apologize, then you're like, yeah, it's just, this person is apologizing because it's not, it's not the thought of the day. Yeah. Like people are not happy about this thoughts. But like some people, even in smaller circles, you know people, when they debate, they have similar thoughts. Mm. So I don't think you should apologize if you do believe in something. Just find a way to back it up and explain yourself and why you believe in something. Because I think we do need different types of thoughts mm. instead of one thought running sure. the internet. Is social media a curse or a blessing? So far, so far I would say it's a cool place. The, the other day someone was commenting about your skin, for instance. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, but, uh, let, let's talk about that. My skin? Yeah. That's my grandmother. <laughs> As my grandma, okay, like, because, you know, like, a lot of people want me to, to tell them, what do I use, what do yes, I use, yes, and I'm yes. like, I don't know what to tell you, mm. unless someone is paying me, then I will say, yes, Vaseline, <laughs> yes, camphor, <laughs> yes, glycerine, but, like, it's my grandmother right now. But all three worked, though, clearly. Together. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you look like a shining <laughs> thing, but they work. Uh, for now, it's just, uh, it's, it's my grandmother, and just, you know, just uh, hydrating and, and bathing and yeah. just moisturizing. <laughs> What's next for Wazi? Uh, I'm, I'm being told we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Yeah. Um, and I, I am looking forward to, to writing some dope ass, uh, dope ass shows to be part of a lot of exciting writing rooms. Mm. And I want to record my hour. I launched my hour at the Jobek Theatre and I've been touring it the whole of last year. So yes. I want to record my hour now so that I, it is in the streaming world. For those that missed that hour, what's part of, what have we missed out in that hour? reflecting the times uh, and it's titled dawn because it is my beginning okay so i i talk on a lot of things i talk on a also like question what is woman stuff because sure. people think that you're a woman you're going to talk about woman mm. stuff like mm. what is woman stuff what is woman stuff? i don't know what is woman stuff because <laughs> it sounds like i don't know like some greasy something yes what yes. is <laughs> what is woman? i don't want to say things <laughs> yeah <laughs> greasy power oh, say it, say it. Woman stuff sounds like a greasy vagina. What is woman stuff? What is woman stuff? So I, I do talk about things like that, and I do talk about relationships, and mm. I do talk about the reality of being an artist sure. and um, the world that we live in. Are you in a relationship? No. Okay, let me just check. Because these what, what, things change. I wasn't. When, when you last messaged? Yeah, I think I don't know. Uh, when does this air? Um, this week, tomorrow. I think I'll still be in a You'll relationship. You'll still be in a relationship. <sighs> Maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, Wazi <laughs> might be single. 
So please find her on social media. She will. She, you've recorded your hour already. Right? Um, no, I haven't recorded. When can we see the recording? Uh, probably, we're, we're, we're gonna the be year. there. We want to support you. You're gonna be there because I will have it online yeah. too for you to come to the recording. Social media, where do we find you? Everywhere on all social media platforms. I am Wazi M Gunene. Wazi. No underscores, no hashtags, just Wazi M Gunene. Wazi M Gunene, ladies and gentlemen. Remember the name, the comics choice, best newcomer, the first ever woman to do it. But then, like she said, she's from a f- family of women who did a lot of firsts. <laughs> so please so show her some love. Wazi M. Kunene. This is. Wow! What, what a week. What a week. This kid. Yeah! <laughs> really kicks. <laughs> Many people have an issue using public transport. The wait is irritating, then you get off and still have to walk home, sometimes carrying bags and packages. Now, here's a young African who said, hang on, we can change this. Please welcome someone who didn't just have a cool idea, but pushed to make it happen. CEO of Green Scooter, Stututu, without the Tututu, Fezile Jamini. Hi, Fresh. What's up, my dude? I'm all good, man. How you doing? Welcome to Wow, What a Week, hashtag What a Kid. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's actually crazy uh, being here because, like, I think the first thing I was thinking on my way here was, I was thinking about back in the day, tattooing, tattooing in the morning. How old were you at the time? I was probably doing grade five. Jeez, all right. Um, so I was probably. So you had no t- business listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't. It was myself, my grandfather, every morning just listening to. I always made sure it was tattooing, tattooing in the morning. That was it. With your granddad. Yeah. That was so dope. Yeah, I mean, we actually both enjoyed it. Yes, and where is he now? Oh, he's late. Oh, no, man. Rest yeah. in peace, Grandpa. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 he was great. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. But we're here to talk about your greatness. Yeah. Uh, Fezile Jamini 101. Who are you from where? Okay, Fezile Jamini, born and bred in Soweto, exported to the Burbs, matured in various parts of the country. That's my beer ad. And I, <laughs> and I mean, I, 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 I was a rebel growing up and... Um, I used to break things and just to see how they look. Yes. And eventually I fell in love with with what I'm doing today. And yes, I never sir. thought I was gonna do today do do what I'm doing today. So yeah. Before you went green scooter, what were you doing? I was studying. Okay. What were, so, you, what, so, what were you studying? So I was studying uh, strategic corporate communications at UJ. Mm-hmm. And in my final year, because I had a company already and I was already doing some stuff, yeah. um, I was literally in Richards Bay at the time. And I just saw Umama getting off a taxi, literally with her shop, with her shop right, uh, plastic bags. And I knew that she had a last mile to fulfill. Oh, yes. So that's where it all started. It was like... It was bothering me because I mean we see it every day. Yes, yes. You know, you see people walk. First mile is literally out your gate to the to the first taxi rank mm. or whatever. Mm. And then your mid mile is from where from 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 um from that taxi to your next stop and then your final stop is literally to at, at the office or wherever it is that you're going. So that's where that's where the 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 thought was like literally ignoring in my brain as to look, you can solve this because yes, we yes. need transport options. One, two, it needs to be affordable. Three, it's how then do you find find ways to empower the rest of society? Absolutely. Um, so this has nothing to do with the fact that you applied for an e-hailing um, <laughs> opportunity and they rejected you. No, uh, actually, okay, crazy story. Yes. Uh, while I was doing my final year, I just kept on applying for jobs at those at the, at the two companies. What the e-hailing companies? Yeah, the e-hailing okay. companies. Yeah. So I was just constantly applying because even the idea for Green Scooter uh, came up in class when we were doing a particular uh, assignment and they were just showing us certain things that are happening around the world. Mm. So I've always been fascinated with what happens outside of uh, Africa and how th- and how we can f- find ways to localize concepts sure. but also create authenticity uh, with, with how they are um, applied through living lab methodologies mm-hmm. and design thinking uh, approaches. So it literally started there and I mean over... <laughs> Over 70, probably up yeah, close to 70 applications at those two companies. 70? Yeah. Pro- and they rejected you? Yeah, I mean, I applied not only here, but also yeah. abroad. So, so you're like a typical guy at Varsity. Like, this girl would not give you a time of day, so you finish your degree, and you're like, I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> funny story. Can I tell you a funny story? So one of those companies eventually called me up. 
and they're like, yo, we want to have a meeting, we want to chat, you yes. know, we think we, we can put a deal together. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, I was flying in from Cape Town. I was like, sure, I'll come through to you guys' offices. And when I sat with the one guy, I said, I literally said to him, I was like, please do me a favor before you go further. Please just check how many like applications you guys got from me. Yes. Uh, and this is now a business meeting. But I'm like, look, I just want to, I just want to see this thing. And then he went and he checked. He's like, oh, oh, we can actually see all your applications. I'm like, it's so crazy how the world works because now in from applying to trying to take what I'm doing for Green Scooter um, into into these companies because yes. I really think that like you know you need you need a lot of support with great ideas absolutely and yeah I mean then I'm I'm now on the other side where I'm I, I'm the person who you can call shots now I can actually yes seven years later absolutely what does it take though because I believe it takes a special kind of person to not only have an idea yeah. at varsity level yeah but to stay the course and implement it and stay the course and make sure that it might be tough right now, but we're going to see this right through to the end. One thing is that it's, you don't need motivation. Yeah. You need discipline. Yeah. Like if you really, really believe in, believe in yourself and you believe in what you're trying to do. I mean, I've, I've gotten close to 400 rejections. Yeah. And, and that's what, and that's just from a girl in, th in third year. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that girl still heard me in grade three. <laughs> okay. Get it. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's 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 for over four hundred applications. It's realizing within the first fifty that okay, it's not going to work. Yeah. Trying to uh, beg people to to help you get there. So you have to now find a way to help yourself. I think you know, as a person, if you really know what you want and you're about it, um, you'll do whatever it takes, and you you're willing to fail forward. And mm -hmm. that's what I've always done. Like. I think throughout my varsity years, I've always been working. Yes. Like I've never just sat in jail and then no idea, whatever. So you've had the discipline of understanding that work ethic needs to be built. Yeah. That you need to work towards something. Yeah. And you know, so, sorry to yeah. interrupt you there. Yeah. It's, it's, the thing is, once you go, if you continuously teach yourself skills, yeah. right? Because I used to be a radio DJ as well. Sure. But with that, I mean, it was skills that I taught myself because I wanted to. Because mm -hmm. I knew that tomorrow, no one's going to mm -hmm. take those skills away from me. Yes. That's how I pulled my transcendent advantage as a person. Yeah, like you were saying, that you know, motivation sadly only gets you out of bed. Discipline yeah. will get you out there <laughs> and doing what you need to get done. Yeah, it will get you through the day. Like, yeah. yeah. Now that we're here, what is Green Scooter? All right. So Green Scooter is. It started off as an autom as an e-hailing company, okay, and then it, it pivoted into being a technology and uh, an automotive company. Then yep. pivoted into becoming a technology company. So we build, design, assemble electric vehicles, which are the three wheelers that we have. Okay, so it's a tuk tuk, but an e tuk tuk it's almost. A, it's a tuk tuk that went to private school. Aha! Uh -huh. So a tuk tuk is a rasi. I rasi. Actually, funny enough, yesterday I was with these guys from a, 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 a particular embassy. From, from Asia yes, and they, they were like it makes no noise I was like yeah and you know we're busy laughing because uh, even I think their accent was also just quite funny because we're laughing at my accent and theirs yeah. and then they said uh, but you know like in our country you're going to have to like add some noise elements in there because it, it scares people oh yes yeah because I mean it just sounds like if you just yeah. the whole way yeah. 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 So, so I've come up with an idea I want to come up with something that will help people with the last mile you yeah. get off a taxi you must still walk in you know you leave work you must still walk back to the bus stop how do you get funding who do you approach how did it all happen for me um, I knocked and I knocked yeah realized that no one's gonna give me funding like sure. be it a DFI or private or whoever so then I just took it, took it upon myself to start another company. Okay. Um, Use that as my cash cow, which Jeez. made me enough money to start funding the dream. So you raised the cash cow yeah. so that you can fund it this year. Yeah. Jeez. Literally, if it, if it wasn't for that cash cow, <laughs> if it wasn't for that cash cow, none of it would exist. So what was the cash cow? What were you doing to raise money, and why did you not just stay there making money then? <sighs> Look, it was it was a media agency. Okay. Right? So we, we were building, designing. Uh, software and hardware. Okay. Right. So you build like smart mirrors, like this over here, you turn into a smart mirror, and you like you can inter interact with it. Blah blah. Yeah. blah. So and we we're running like marketing campaigns. So I can't really obviously mention the companies and stuff, mm -hmm. but we did all of that, and that was good money that helped to literally accelerate uh, the, the 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 bigger dream. Exactly. Yeah. Because building, uh, being 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 black is like it's one thing, and I and I don't like saying that at times because it's like a positioning statement. Right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is. 
being young as well, it's it, it becomes very tough to to start a car company okay. because you're starting ground up mm-hmm. and you're building this in an environment where we're just used to being consumers. Yes, you know. So if you look at our industrial space, our industrial space is only made for the made men and women, mm-hmm. right? But more so made men. So you now have to fight so many battles trying to build this company. You have to build this technology. You need to build the, your, your your product. You need to build the networks. You need to build the 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 the, the new proactive public policy that is needed yeah. uh, to help accelerate and protect this this small niche industry. So uh, mm-hmm. I mean, right now in the country, there's only two of us who do this. Yeah. It's myself and another guy in Stellies. Mm. And you know, I mean, with both. Oh, Stellies is Stellenbosch, by the way. Uh, you know, ignore the private school <laughs> slang. <laughs> Jeez. So, so yeah, I mean, um, it's it's really tough when you when you when you when you're going into an industry that has always been for these types of made men yes. and women. Yes. And uh, it's an industry... And they've been building for 40 years. Over 40 years. Yes. I mean, uh, for the, the first... The first In fact, a lot of it is legacy money that they didn't build. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Oh, another, another can of worms. But yeah, um, but yeah like the, the, the truth is, like you're fighting so much. But for me, I think throughout my entire journey, what I appreciate is... Um, Never really getting support from 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 my own people, yeah. and I always get support from foreigners or um, you know my people in in, in Stellies or Pretoria. Yes. Or, you know, it's, it's it's always kind of weird. It's it's very weird. A, a friend of mine is in construction, and he was lamenting the the, the, the exact same thing. Yeah. that every big boy that's black in construction closed the door in his face. And it was the boys from Stelly's who said, "Oh no, come in. We'll show you how to do this." Yes, and 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 it's 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 a crazy thing because, you know, it, it's weird of how I need to find myself networking uh, with my own people yep. versus how I network with you yes, know, um, yes. other races. Mm. And other races, they love what we're doing because they believe that anything is possible, and they want to share and help you grow. Exactly. I mean, versus block you off or steal your idea. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, the, the best thing that I feel like we, we we should all be doing at at some point. I mean, the responsibility with being successful yep. is sending the elevator back down. Sure. So let's all come up because th- when you come up, we all come up. Mm. But mm. it's not like that for many other types yes, of sir. people. Yeah. So. You decide that, okay, I'm going to set up Green Scooter. Yeah. Is it now I need to build a factory? Like, what were the steps? Yeah. Steps were ideation. Okay. So, ideation was, here's what I want to do. Here's what I believe in. Yeah. And then, second step was, now I need money. And sure. It wasn't, it wasn't coming from anywhere. So, I had to now go abroad to try to partner up with people. But And this is in Europe. Mm. I had to partner up with people and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. How can we start moving? How do you find these people? YouTube and okay. <laughs> literally it was it was it was YouTube and and just a whole lot of googling. Mm, mm. So you know I became a Google specialist <laughs> uh, over time or, or, or a prompt or, or a prompt engineer. Yes. So yes. you know being able to use to utilize uh, social social and digital communication tools yep. really helped. Um, yeah. Tell us about your Swedish partners and why do you think they said, "Listen, we'll do this." Because I took my last money that I had mm-hmm. and I literally went abroad. And it's, it's crazy. Like how, how, how business works abroad is that anyone can send an email and yeah. ask to work with someone. Sure. But if you but show up. If you show up, that's yeah. another story. Yeah. And I mean, look, let me tell you first. I think I, after I came back from Sweden, I was broke. Literally, because I used my last money, and I sure. thought that now having come with all these tools, now it will enable me mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. to you know, get all this funding I've been asking for, and all these things. But it never, it never happened like mm-hmm. that. So I was was broken. Then I had to come up with an idea as to my phone's already cut. Tell them, yeah, they cut my phone. Mm-hmm. I, I can only receive calls, not make them. Um, I, I I finished my my savings because when I left my my last job in mm. in in because I worked corporate for a year nine months and I was like sure. I'm done with this I'm yeah, living dead again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I upload upload my savings and and then I eventually started the company. Mm. Two months of grafting, asking my mom for money, asking my friends for money, you know, just a little bit of money just to mm. get by. Mm-hmm. And yeah, eventually you know, diro di chinchi. Sure. And you know, I appreciate I appreciate that. So who is your target with a green scooter? Are you manufacturing? 
to mm. also run them or are you selling to people? So our, our unit economics is, is as follows. We build to sell, we build to lease, okay. we provide fleet management services, um, we do get some advertising revenue. So in terms of who we are targeting, yeah. we're talking to FMCGs. Mm -hmm. So currently our largest client is the sixth largest FMCG in the world. Okay. Uh, you can name them, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, so we, we, we're currently doing, we're the first African African owned company yeah. that is that is literally supplying uh, paper to go with electric vehicles Dope. so we're doing we're literally doing first mile first mile deliveries so first mile we've actually now started reinventing what that is okay because a lot of people like talking first uh, last mile mm. no one knows what first mile is yes and we and because again we've had the we've had the advantage of launching evs in the township soweto alex sushanguva and all those other places um we've we've mastered and understood what the logistics and the the lay of the land works the understanding the science as well mm -hmm. so with pepsico we'd like doing deliveries from dc to retailer okay and then with other with other businesses where we lease out our vehicles mm -hmm. uh that's that that's the stuff that's happening with spa they are going now from retailer to consumer oh. so we're now making sure we're holding this first mile and last mile because we understand it mm -hmm. and now we're also building a new product okay fresh let me tell you i'm this is going to be the most advanced electric uh, three-wheeler in the world. Uh, the designs are beautiful. Yeah. Um, we actually were having some chats yesterday with some engineers. They want to try and bring in our team to yeah. come help us with, with, with that and even bettering the current. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm trying to build tomorrow. That's what I'm trying to do. Now, you're talking about, obviously, you're going to master the first and the last mile. Yeah. So how do you do that without also stepping on the toes of the taxi industry, for instance? So we've more focused on cargo, okay. right? Initially, I did want to participate in the passenger passenger transport. Mm. But it, there, there was a lot of uh, pushback from people not wanting to educate themselves and understand that I'm not taking away money from you. Yes. Right? So... Over time, I think throughout the years, we eventually built certain models and designed mm -hmm. certain models where we were going to start providing uh, mm -hmm. uh, what you call uh, what is it called a, a, a feeder system into the into into the into the public transport system, okay. Okay. right? Because again, Omama also is a and Usala itubi. She must still, you know, she must still walk. Go because yeah. inside the 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 the, the locations, or even yeah. the suburbs. Mm. Public transport doesn't go there. Sure. So we wanted to try and create this unique system. Uh, and we did present it at times, um, even look as far as how train is concerned from mm. an express perspective, mm. is that our vehicles are so safe. They're, most, they're the safest three wheelers in the whole world. They've got sure. three point safety belts mm. for drivers and passengers. Mm. They've done crash testing. Um, they've got sales on the side. So we were yeah. trying to improve that so that mm. you don't take anything away. Sure. Um, and even try to give ownership to the guys and mm -hmm. saying, here's a business model, run with it. Mm. Our business is just building vehicles. We know where the future is going. Yes, sir. So, yeah, I mean, at some point, as well, just to mention, we will build bigger vehicles. It's an electric vehicle in a country that has electricity problems. <laughs> Why should I invest in one of these? Well, you should invest in it because you need to understand what your total cost of ownership, ownership is when you purchase a vehicle. Yeah. So you purchase our vehicles. I mean, um, we, we we once did it. We, we've done we've done multiple P and Ls, you know, for the likes of McDonald's and um, V&A Waterfront and all mm -hmm. these companies. When you purchase our product, understanding the current circumstances, uh, companies are already investing in. Uh, sustainable uh, energies to help mm. be off the grid, but no one is actually off, off the grid because there's a constant flow of current. Yes. So with with with, with what we 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 what we're uniquely doing is that we're showing them the numbers, mm. getting them to understand that yes, there's there's a shortage of energy, but if you invest in these particular technologies, sure, over a seven year period, you'll realize your your investment because mm. again, there's net ad savings that uh, uh, and cost savings that our, our our customers are making. I think with with uh, with the one client, we started in December on the twelfth. Um, I think within the first three months, they'd already saved 300,000 Rand. Jeez. And that's in, that, that's an operational cost. Yes. And this is because you're not you're not spending money on fuel yeah. and all the other operations mm -hmm. and maintenance costs. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're now uh, uniquely defining 
your service to your to your end customer. Mm. You know, we're creating a rapid system when it sure. comes when it comes to deliveries. Mm. So that's that that's you know we can sit and we can discuss and I can break it all down for you and then you'll realize that actually going electric does make sense. Yes, now we've got all these. Mm. We've had it for fourteen years. We've got this teenager called uh, load shedding. Yeah. Um, the only way to counter it is is just understanding that if you invest in uh, self sustainable charging infrastructures, so which is stuff that we are doing, we consult. Yeah. Then we can move. Forward. It all still adds up in terms of what you're going to save anyway exactly and, and actually and the thing is with every with every per, per annum with the one with the one model mm. you can uh, actually reinvest and buy another one with those savings Jeez. but now if, with what we've done with this particular client yep. we've now <laughs> we can see that they can buy a new vehicle every one and a half months yes because of those savings and add to the fleet boom Absolutely love it. Brother man, we are out of time. Yeah. Um, so whom again are you targeting and who should get in touch with you for a green scooter? So we're targeting FMCG companies. We're targeting uh, small businesses. We're targeting individuals because with the individuals, we're trying to make sure that they get uh, an opportunity to participate in the entire um, uh, delivery, mm. delivery logistics system on their own. Yeah. Uh, we are targeting uh, re- uh, what retailers and, and on-demand uh, platforms. I live on a golf estate. Should I buy one of these yes actually we have a client that bought one at um in midran waterfall sure. in waterfall they bought one because the thing is you get you can stay in an estate mm. they give you an option to lease a golf cart right mm. at like six and a half a month yeah uh, versus, and but now you can't you can only drive your, your golf cart in the estate so if you want to go to waterfall corner yeah you have to drive out with your physical car yes sir and now with our vehicle what is that the guy's like no i can drive in the estate and outside the estate because it's a licensed vehicle how much would it cost me to buy one so the pa- so we've got a zv rs which is a passenger one driver two passengers yeah that's uh 144 270 Okay. Um, and then we've got, and that's inclusive of that. And we've got the ZV Cargo, which is uh, one driver and a, a cubic meter of of, 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 of of bin space. Okay. You can buy that for 155 250 Where do we find you online? You find me on www.greenscooterza.com. Uh, social handles is Scooter RSA. Uh, myself, Ufezi Lezamini underscore. Listen, I can't afford one yet. Um, until the podcast makes money, uh, we'll keep uh, teka teking along. But uh, make some noise for Fezi Le Chamini. He is our hashtag, what a kid. On Wow, what a week. What a kid. This is Wow. What a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. Our guest is in the building. He schooled across the tracks and up the road from where we film Wow. He even got a certification from a place around the corner. He showcased his skills on different platforms and is about to do so again in a unique way. Please give a wow welcome to Bongin Kosi, Bonko Koza. Wow. <laughs> Brother, wow. how you doing, wow. dog? Thank you, bro. I'm good. How are you? My man, you know, from watching you on, um, from watching you on The Wife, right. to hear the thing, the English you speak, it's like it's two totally different people. Yeah, man. Uh? Yeah, I heard. I heard. I mean, it's, it's, it's always just been me, but until, I guess, you, you, you get known by a bunch of people and they all have, they will say something that you didn't know about yourself, I guess. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. But is that because you are that dedicated to every role that you take? that you become the, the person? Not really. Yeah. Fresh, I think it's it's a knack. Yeah. It's a knack. I knew the words f- to the mask Yeah. when I was like very young. I knew the, oh, the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. Jeez. I used to, uh, the Lion King, bro, we used to watch it, write it down. So I don't know. It's a knack for accents and talking. Is it a knack or are you just generally geeky? Yeah, about <laughs> about certain things, right? <laughs> so I, I guess yeah, I'm a nerd about, and I, like I always I go around saying this. I, I used to rap, you know. Yeah. So I used to be, you know, I, I used to enjoy words, speaking them how they sound. Used to yeah. shout out with poetry, you know. Back in the day, we shout out a girl with the, the the poetry there. Please give us an example of how you'd shout out a girl with your poetry back then. Ish, baby girl, we you understand? No, that's a yeah. I'm a piano song. <laughs> <laughs> Got me. <laughs> Got me, bro. Got me. So so back then when you're rapping, what yeah. were you what were you rapping? Like what what, what are the big tunes then? Uh, back in the day, dude, so we used to listen to Mob Deep, Shook Ones, that kind of 
that was like the so you're that generation yeah mob yes. deep um yo um the pink if you did Mob Deep? Yeah. You used to listen to a lot of Mob Deep. You used to listen to a lot of Eminem, a lot of D12, uh, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, you know, the, the Slim Shady era. Sure. Uh, like from Infinite. So, so, so what was your rap, like your go-to rap tune? Because we all have one. Infinite by Eminem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let, let's hear you go. Infinite. Infinite. Come on, fresh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Let's talk about your childhood. Where were you born and raised? I'm born and raised in the south of Johannesburg. Well, I was born in Shawela. Sure. Which is Soweto. Yes. And then I think when we were about like, when I was about four or five, we moved to the south of Johannesburg. Moving on up. Yeah. Yeah. To a little suburb called Robert Sham. Sure. I don't think it's moving up. I think it was just, yeah, it's just not in Soweto. Okay, so it was moving out versus moving out. out. Up. Yeah, it was more like moving out because we were still kind of, Robert Sham is still like a pretty chilled, sure. middle class, mm. you know, type mm -hmm. of society. Uh, very diverse. Coloreds, Indians, yeah. white people were all kind of mashed up together, mm -hmm. which is I think I got how how I am, what I am because I grew up in a quite a diverse upbringing. So yeah, I went to school in the south, Robert Chan Primary. Mm -hmm. Went to for two years. I went to what is called President. And then, uh, well, then what happened after the two years? I went to NSA. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah, then yes. I went to the School of Arts. So, yeah, I played rugby for uh, a good chunk of my childhood. No, I can see you was quite staunchish. Yeah, muscle memory. Yeah, I can man. see you, eh? Yeah, yeah, come, fresh yeah, trying to be lucky, yeah, bro. Yeah. Come on. Lock, yo, yeah, fully, eh? Like, where's the ball, eh? Yeah, where's, where's the ball? Come, boy. Lock, stop, stop. Yeah, man, so I'm just, yeah, man, boy from the south. There's a lot like me. The people look at me different. Like, there's a lot of people like me. Mm. Yeah. So, what was it about the arts that said that's the journey I want to take? Because obviously, you're growing up in an era where the country's changing. Right. Black parents are starting to understand that the arts are an option for our kids. Yeah. Uh, whereas for some of us, the arts were like, you, you must be mad gotcha. if, if you think you're going to go into the arts. So, so you're being raised in a country that's evolving. Right. What was it about the arts at that stage for you? Man, I think, uh, like now, if, 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 if I change my perspective to what is happening in the arts, yes. I think South Africa was at a time of more access, we were starting to become kind of Eurocentric, yes, yes. Americanized in the type of content. Like I grew up watching. Like, Ac accents were changing. Accents were changing, right? So you would watch like Martin, yeah. you know, Martin was like this crazy show or In Living Color where they, yeah. these guys speak funny and they yeah. dress funny. So yeah. I think we were influenced a lot by that but for me personally speaking as Bonko I was just like drawn to it you know I think the same way an accountant realizes they like numbers or same way a kid you know I don't know dissects a mouse and realizes he wants to be a doctor whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever thing that you get drawn to I was just drawn to the arts that way but I you're right it's a good way to think about it like what was happening interesting way to think about what was happening in the country for us to get drawn to it so freely. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, yeah. Where, where, where you don't have to hide what you're doing. It's crazy. Because yeah. the parents understand. That yeah. That's where the world is going. It's TV. They have, I think it had to be the inception of TV, DSTV. Um, Sibs call it, like a friend of mine calls us like the McDonald's generation. Yes. Right? And we used to, we used to say that term a lot, like in press, like mm. uh, we were in New York at Tribeca and used to use the term a lot. I kind of get it now. We're like the DSTV generation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I knew that I was going to be in the arts. Yeah. And in entertainment because of a school production. Okay. It was the nativity. Yeah. I was in grade two. Yeah. And I played the innkeeper. Okay. And I remember I had two lines. Yeah. And these two lines for me were like, if I mess these, this up, it's over. Yeah. My lines, Mary, Mary and Joseph walk up to the inn because Mary's about to pop. You yeah. Know, the, you know, J-Dog is, is about to He's on the way. He's on the way. And I'm like, we have no room in the inn. Uh. You may use the stable. And I was like, I want to do this for the rest <laughs> of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you, tell us about Captain Cook. Captain Hook. Hook. Captain Hook. Man. 
Similar thing. Yeah. School play. I think we were in grade three or four. Um, and we we had they had different auditions for different things. Yeah. Bro, to this day, I still think I was supposed to be Peter Pan. Oh yes. You know, I was supposed to be Peter Pan, but this is what like the nineties. Mm. You know. So, so they were they were not ready. They weren't ready for for for, for, for Denzel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> for 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 someone's gonna bring that gravitas. Exactly. Through. But it was like, yeah, I, I think the choices. That was the first time for me. I think running into politics. You know, the politics of Ex- race. Yeah, experiencing yes. the politics. Because in my head, I was like, ah, oh, but. I'm, I'm better, than, I'm this better than this guy. Yes. Yeah. Everyone knows that. It's clear yes. as day. Yeah. But then they gave me Captain Hook, which was like the villain. Yeah. And man, I played the ish out of that. Sure. Yeah. Um, and part of me was like, I'm going to show them why I should have been Peter Pan, but not by doing Peter Pan. Yes. But by like playing the crap out of this role. And it was just liberating. I don't think that was that, I, that that for me wasn't a defining moment. Mm. Mm. I just had fun then. Sure. Defining moment would have been 2016, 17, yeah. where I was like grown ass man working an office job. Yeah. Like I was this junior promo director at this agency. Okay. And we're, we're working and I'm earning. Is this after NSA? This is after NSA. Okay. This is after everything, right? Sure. So, I mean, I've had a bunch of stories where I would say acting. Viewed it ahead. It was yeah. like, hey, bra, yeah. you can be friends. Yeah. But I was like, I have my own plans. Sure. You sure. know. But this. So, so what were the plans at that stage? At that stage, it was going to be like a. So I went to art school. So the plan was to be like a graphic designer. Oh, yes. I did, I, 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 I did copywriting. I mean, I should be a, a journalist or a copywriter. Right. Here I am. But now, okay, we're going to get deep into this. Yeah. Do you think that that stuff informed what you're doing now? As in, it's not like completely irrelevant to who Fresh is right now. I'll, I'll tell you the honest truth. Um, I had an option to major in radio. Right. But I knew that I kicked so much ass at radio right. from the age of 19 that if I'm going to varsity, they can't teach me anything. Got you. So I want to do something else. Okay. Because I know I kick ass at radio. Sure. So, but because I, I have a knack for words and writing mm-hmm. and, 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 and I knew I was witty. I was like, the next best thing is to either be a journalist or a copywriter. Sure. So I did both. Got you. But uh, the one feeds the other. Mm. Yes. Now, how much of that decision, you knew that, okay, choosing these things is actually going to help my radio. Yeah. No, no, ab- absolutely. Because, yeah. I mean, w- when you're prepping, you're playing with words. Got you. You, you, you have to be economical with words sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Or you have to be witty. You have to... So, so it's, it's all wordplay. Yeah, man. You know, whether you're a poet, a rapper, a radio person, a lawyer, it's all wordplay. It's play. all wordplay. That's probably why I'm a failed lawyer at <laughs> two years of law. Really? Yeah. I'm sure it's still going to add up. Who's interviewing who here? <laughs> <laughs> right, so you got Bonko on the WOW show, right? Got this cool guy fresh in the building. <laughs> Anyway, so you're yeah. working at an agency. So I'm working at an agency. Yeah. Um, it was like, at that point, okay, I was like, I'm creative. Yes. But you can't make money off acting. Sure. I used to book like a commercial a year. You walk away with like a 20 grand. Yeah. You spend it with your friends, buy your mom something, and then yeah. you're back to sure. the same place, right? So Back to unemployed. Back to unemployed. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'm working at this agency. I can still run during lunch, do a casting, come sure. back. Sure. But it, things changed when it was like, I booked this job to be on this series. They're paying me six months of my salary, mm-hmm. which is my perceived value to society yes. for four weeks sure. of work. And I'm like, nah, nigga, yeah. I'd be stupid if I stay. <laughs> yeah. So that was the moment that was like, okay, cool. This is where I got to go. This so, is- so where were you going at that stage? I was going to take the check, mm-hmm. shoot four weeks. Okay. So what were you shooting? I was shooting a series called The Professionals. Okay. Professionals with uh, Brian, Brendan Fraser and uh, what's his name? Superman. He was Superman on uh, on on Smallville. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Cool guy. I just forgot his name. Sorry, yeah. bro. Um, and I was like, cool, dude. I'll shoot four weeks of this. Be as if I worked six months here at this agency. Sure. So you have five months to play with after that. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, and something dawned on me that, that creativity is actually the in-between. Yes. It's not when you're actually doing it. Mm. I was like, 
fuck, this is actually... Doing it is the culmination, bruh. You know what I mean? It's... it's, it's yeah, it's, it's the result. I've been macking, I've been macking, I've been macking. Then I've got a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I love what it's actually... <laughs> so, you, you know, we, we know it's in the journey. Yes. It's in yes, the strategy. Yes, yes. And I was like, actually, this is perfect because I've got four or five months to perfect yep. my next thing that I'm doing. So I, I, I'll, I'll work another four months to actually work for two more weeks yes. in another job absolutely and i started seeing my career that way and yeah things so, 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 you, so, so you get the professionals yeah and 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 how did you see it change the rest of your life i was calmer yeah i was calmer i used to be very anxious I used to be very it afforded me peace yes 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 yeah yes. and that peace i still carry mm. it's like an assurance that like me and this craft or me and this this thing were good it six months of 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 space is not six months of hunger true it's like six months of like mm. chilling out working out uh, planning sure. so i can do it for a small extent mm. I, I understand life that way instead of like i don't connotate my effort with my output oh yes 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 yeah yes. anymore i used to be like not working hard enough that's why you don't have enough, mm. enough money it's like mm. no not really Sometimes it's prepare 80% yes. so you can do it for like an hour. I mean, same here, right? I'm sure you spend the whole morning preparing to exactly. do this for like 10, 20 That's minutes. It. Mac, 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 one minute. Maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> if you've macked well enough, a minute is more than one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Fred said that, I said that. It's an argument we have with a lot of clients right. where they'll say to you, why must I pay X amount? For an hour yeah and i always argue you're not paying an hour you're not paying me for an hour you're no. paying me for 30 years of work yeah you're paying me for 30 years of goodwill yeah you're paying me for 30 years of building this brand absolutely you're not paying for that hour no 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 and and and, and the sooner people start seeing that that's what the arts are yeah you're not paying for those minutes yeah yeah you're paying for the prep you're paying for uh, the, the anxiety i went through unemployed for a year you're gonna pay for that it's exactly <laughs> that though. it's exactly that i mean i i get shocked at people who call me i recently got a call yeah on the day, bro. Yeah. Tom's like, hey, Bonko, are you free? I'm like, depends. Yeah. They're like, well, can you come and shoot today? You're lying. Can you come and shoot today? I'm like, ah. And I felt it, right? That yeah. desperation. Yeah. And then it's like. Yeah, the, there's a fine line. This is, yeah, the, and you got to choose quick, right? Or not choose quick, but you got to be mindful. Yes. I was like. I was like, and, nah. and, and also you ask yourself, who dropped them that they need me so quickly? Uh, then I ask, right? I'm like, what's happening? What's yeah. going on? This is this is not okay. Yeah. It's like, no, we don't. The guy we're using doesn't work. Like, uh, so you only realize it now. So you realizing who, that now? Who cast to this person? Who like what happened to that process? Exactly. Because that's a process. And now I must jump in. Yeah. Give you like whatever I'm feeling right now. It's yeah. like it doesn't work. That and, way. and also you don't feel like you're sloppy seconds. Bad. You know what I mean? You don't feel like we're desperate, we've been dropped, therefore he's our next option. Yeah, he's our next option. And not even next, hey, I mean like the scrambling. Yes, who's the guy we can take advantage yeah. of? Oh, right now. Who's not doing anything right now? Exactly. So, I don't know. That 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 hit, that, that hurts the final pro product for mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. like, so, so, I come so, in. So, did you take the gig? <laughs> <laughs> Still safely unemployed. <laughs> Would you say a lot of us slept on the talent that you are until the wife? Wow, that's a that's a that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, a lot of talent gets slept on. Mm. A lot. I'm mm. I'm one of many people. Uh, because for me, watching the wife exposed me to a ton of people I had no idea, of. like yeah. zero idea, right? Not that I watch a lot of TV or a lot of series. Yeah. But but having said that though, there's a ton of talent that we never get to see. That you you miss. Yeah. And it's it's because of the formula, I think how how it's been set out. Yeah. Whatever this formula that that studios and sorry, like channels think is working. Yeah. I don't think it necessarily works. Sure. Yeah. I was I'm very fortunate to have been prepared for that that size of a role mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a hit and miss right you do find new faces but turns out the dude's not really prepared to lead a whole show like that mm -hmm. which is cool sure but yeah i think for me it was just a mixture of preparation mm -hmm. and that luck but also you are in a committed relationship yeah 
How does preparation for a role also incorporate your partners, given how sometimes your roles are intimate, yeah. they are racy, there's nudity, there's this, there's that. Yeah. And, and, and I'd like to think that your partner is part of the process. Absolutely. As much as people might not think of it that way, you need to manage everything, mm. including your relationship. Mm. Mm. So with me, with me, I'm very fortunate that my, my, my wife is an actress. Yeah. So beyond like, when I say process, I mean like she's, she's helping me learn the lines. Sure. She's shooting, she knows. She's dog, everything. Yes. She's shooting the process with me, the self tape, even the self tape for their wife is her voice in the back. Yeah. You know, um, she was the first slow-mo when we got the lines. Yes. Like, okay, play slow-mo, I'm going to read this. Mm -hmm. So we discovered it together. We created it together. Mm. Um, ah, so at least you get to practice also. Yeah, no, <laughs> The big dog bites. <laughs> you understand? So yeah, man, it's it, it's. I'm fortunate. I won't lie. I've 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 heard homies. I'm saying this now on on the whole freaking podcast. I Yo. I offer like some of my time with two homies to. I have like a little bit of studio set up so yes. you can come record at my house. Mm -hmm. Because I know it's hard, bro. Mm. Some guys are alone here in Joburg from sure. KZN. You yeah. must do a self tape. And you're sleeping at a friend's place. Yeah. So yeah. it's Zero like, income. Yeah. I want, like, I speak from a place of privilege, bro. I've got a, a wife who's an actress. Yeah. We work through the stuff together. Most times on Thursdays, mm. we would sit and critique, like, did I do it the way we had planned it? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, did you let the team down? Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't matter what they say. Yeah. Baby, okay. did I do this right? You know? Yeah. But being married to an actress mm. means more often than not, you're both unemployed together. Absolutely. But there's still bills to pay. Yeah. Then there's still, you know, life must still happen. Yeah. How do you guys navigate that? One, given the poor pay that you guys get. Yeah. Given that if you're not shooting three or four, you might shoot three or four, you get three or four gigs at the same time. Yeah. And then it's quiet for six months. Yeah. But those three, four gigs must carry you for the rest of the year. Yeah. How do you guys nav navigate that as a couple? Financial literacy. Yeah. We try to kind of teach ourselves financial discipline. Yeah. Yeah. And keeping things to a minimum. Who's the ill-disciplined one between the two of you I, when it comes to money? I am. I buy anything. I buy a Nintendo Switch. I buy my fucking Apple TV. I buy the latest sneaker. I, I'll buy it, dog. So yeah. I'm often being the one who's being pulled back like, hey, yeah. Sure. So, so we try, bro. We try. Also, we live yeah. uh, comfortably. Sure. And I think you got to be a little bit in the, not in the in the red, yeah. but like, Close enough to the red that you you stay. You to, yeah, you need to be on the edge to realize that I, I, I don't want to fall over. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to fall over the edge. Yeah, but yeah, we try. We're gonna play the wow game. Okay. Uh, yeah. In fact, since we're here, wow, what a woman! What was it about her? Oh man, my woman is. I think it, I think the day I met her, she was wearing yellow. Yeah. Because she's yellow. I was gonna say she's not a yellow bone. Yeah. yeah. And she's yellow. So she was like a, a, a sunflower. Brothers, and she was ye yellow and black, and I used to like her the chiefs at the time. Yo. So, I first thing you used to, isn't you're not a Chiefs fan anymore. Not after this weekend. Jeez. I think we need a new guy, new coach, Ish. new guys. We need we need a lot of new. Yeah, <laughs> we need. A, I think it changed the logo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my woman was just the first day I met her. The moment I saw her, I was like, I think yeah, dude, I almost choked. What did you say to her? I said yo, from ten look away. And then one day you can have mine. <laughs> <laughs> Big dog bites. <laughs> Need a new one. Bites. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah, I'm fighting Gaza. Yeah. No, I'm not trying to understand. Are you for real? Yeah. And it worked. And it worked. Press, she was like, I'm not mad. Take the time. Don't, one, one day we will both have mine. But Jazzy. Yeah. Bamba night, man. How about ten minutes? That guy. Wow, what a dad moment. Since you're playing a fatherly figure. Yeah. Have you ever had moments where you felt like, I'm giving dad advice here? Whew. Dad advice? Yeah. From my own dad? No, no. As in, whether, f yeah, maybe advice you got from your dad that you're passing on, maybe to a colleague that okay. you're working with. Yeah. Um, My dad once said, um, so my dad does these talks as well. He's like, yeah. 
he's into recovery and he helps people, Sanka and all these players. Yes. I watched him say this talk once and he said, a life, well, a life well survived is endured. Yeah. But a life well lived is enjoyed. Yeah. It's my pops. Told me, told me that it's, that's a bar since I was like 10 years old. Wow, what a dad. What is it about him that makes him super dad? I think my dad's the most patient person I've ever met, bro. Yeah. Yeah, he's calm, he's patient. <laughs> I can see it, like, but he, yeah. he never overflows. So always graceful under pressure. Always graceful <laughs> under pressure, the man, the sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, what a city. You schooled around Josie. Yeah. You know, um, um, high school and yeah. and, and uh, at the NSA. Yes, sir. What, what is it about the city, my dude? It's buzzing. Yeah. It's buzzing. I love, I love the city. It's full of inspiration. It's full of... Uh, it's full of motivation. It's yeah. colorful. Yeah. It's it's edgy. It's not safe. It's yeah. It's nice. I I, I like it. It's it's exciting. It's not safe. Nah. You're like you're on the edge all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got a thing with risk. If you're from Joburg, you must have a risk appetite. You know that thing. And even now, I've got to check my phone. Like right? I don't know if I'm gonna come back with my phone today, but hey, let's go. Bro, you could be laughing at fresh right now. You got your phone. Suck. <laughs> ah, fresh. <laughs> what happened, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a moment in Africa moment. Uh, you know, where you fall, felt proud that this is our continent and we're making shit happen, especially in film. Okay, especially in film? Let, let's talk continental pride. I mean, you even did, uh, what, The Woman King? Yeah. Yes, sir. That was special. Yeah. I was about to mention Tuso Mberu's yes. time. That's a special time for Africa. Yeah. Trevor Noah. Yeah. You know, the first time I saw him in John Stewart's chair. Bro. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It was a mind F. It was, it, it was. I was like, what is going on? Yeah, and he's, yeah. I was like, yeah, that moment. What else? Um, yeah. F f in film? Yeah. Yeah. The Woman King? The Woman King. The Woman King, the thing is, it's not, yeah. Did you audition? Did you do a self-tape? Did they call yeah. you? Did they love your work? How did that process work? I did a self-tape. Yeah. A bit of everything you just said, actually. Yeah. Um, they, we all knew about Woman King, right? Yeah. So as actors, if you plugged in with, the, with, your, with like a proper agent, yes. they'll know like a couple of months before. Sure. So we all like, were waiting for it. And then I started shooting the wife and they was like, ah, you can't. Bum. Yeah, yeah. And somehow God did. God did. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. Um, she asked for a tape. I taped it. They went quiet for like four weeks. And I was like, how are they? They, they always do that, eh? I'm like, oh, guys. <laughs> and now they're like, oh, no, you, you're fine. You're fine. Didn't they send you a ticket yet? I was like, oh. So it was a ticket, a ticket to where? Cape Town. To Cape Town. Yeah, yeah, we're shooting in Cape Town. Everything's happening in Cape Town uh, lately in your industry. Bro, when you say, what a city, I thought you were going to mention Cape Town. Yeah. 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 Like. Cape Town's nuts. I know people that are relocating to Cape Town because of that. I know agents who are relocating to Cape Town because of that. Absolutely. What's happening with you guys since you are a unit? I mean, we've, we've always thought about it. My past four jobs have been in Cape Town. So, I mean, if that's not an invitation, I don't know what it is. Man. Yeah, if it's not God saying, I keep talking to you. I'm back. Hey, what's up, Una? <laughs> <laughs> You're stubborn, man. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. nah. I'm, I've got an agent in Cape Town. Yeah. APM. Sure. Um, I'm signed to APM, so mm. most of the work is coming in from sure. that side. Yeah. Wow, what an actor. Which actor's talent do you geek out over? Okay. Yeah. I got a few. Keep it short. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mahershala Ali. Oh, yes. Has an essence about him. Yes. So calming, so strong. Yeah. So dangerous as well. Yeah. Reminds me of Terrence Howard, but like a much more dark skinned Terrence Howard, if you mm -hmm. think of it. But Terrence Howard, Howard had that womanizer thing. Yeah. He overplayed that. Mm -hmm. I think Mahershal is a, he's great. Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah. I, he, he's my favorite actor right now. He's my favorite yeah. actor right now, yeah. too, bro. Yeah. He's able to play like a vulnerability and a strength. At the same time, yeah. at literally at the same time, you feel sorry for him, you wish him well, you're like, you know, he's got this maybe 
And he's doing it in a foreign accent. <laughs> in a foreign accent. <laughs> Dude, what are you talking about? If that is no talent, come on now. No, no, no. Come on now. No, 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 no. And he doesn't break character. No. You know, you know some people, especially American uh, um, actors playing Africans. Yeah. They don't stay true to the accent, for no. instance. No. But Kaluuya never breaks character, never breaks accent. He's in character. Like, it's it's a mindfuck. These British, I don't know what, I think the British tongue. Yeah. Or some, somewhere in the voice and the accent. Yeah. It's closer to the American than we are, but we're very close to the British. For sure. If you think sure. about it. But I mean, the British guys, Tom Holland, uh, Damson Idris, Daniel yeah. Kaluuya, like, yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch, I mean, they... It's almost like the Brits are taking America back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they want the ish back, bro. <laughs> start slowly, start with the, with the accent. Oh, no, man. I mean, yeah, dude. Yeah. Those guys, Daniel Mahershala, I mean, all the guys I just mentioned, mm -hmm. amazing actors, bro. We're going to get straight into our movie of the week. And uh, Hypnotic is a new sci-fi action thriller starring Ben Affleck as a detective trying to find his missing daughter. Things get more complicated as he uncovers a secret government program that changes his perception of the world. Directed by Robert Rodriguez and co-starring Alice Braga, Hypnotic is rated H for... Huh? Yes, one of those movies that might leave you pondering reality afterwards. Hypnotic opens this week only at Stuart Kinnicore. Let's check out the trailer. Are you familiar with the concept of hypnotics? Hypnotics. Hypnotics have the ability to influence the brain. It's very hot today. To make you see a version of the world that doesn't exist. I have to know everything. What you see isn't real! Hypnotic, rated R, only in theaters May 12th. What are you Yo. Directed by? Yo. Uh, Rodriguez. It's Robert, Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. You okay. Would you say a streaming channels, yeah. your Netflix, your Amazon, your Disney Pluses, have forced Hollywood to have a standard that can't drop now? Because now there's budgets and almost anyone can come in, but it has to come in at a certain level. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, there's 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 blockbuster type Hollywood. Yes. I think Hollywood's also been the term to 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 like call high budget movies. Yes, 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 yes. They'll yes, call yes. it Hollywood, right? Sure. Then they'll call the rest of us art house yes. or B grade or whatever. So I, I don't know. When Underground is it Underground Six? No, Extraction. Do you remember Extraction on Netflix? Yeah, yeah. I think when that came out, it leveled the playing fields of sure. like what you can see in the movies and what you can see at home. You can watch it straight at home now. You can watch it at home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think if anything, streaming services are bringing the Hollywood experiences to your home. Yes. Yeah. But do, are you not finding that? there will possibly could be what we've needed on the continent in terms of now we have budgets we can play with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we have a global audience without having to travel to America. First. Absolutely. That's a great thing. You know, now our series can trend globally yeah. on Netflix yeah, without yeah. you having to leave, leave the continent. Exactly, without going anywhere. But now that challenges the filmmakers yeah. and the audience. Yes. Because you can do the... You can make a mean pasta but if the people at home don't eat it yeah it's gone to waste and who knows you make a mean pasta then and who knows you make it just you right <laughs> you, need, you need at least two or three witnesses that can say yeah fresh nice i put without a cosign it's not a mean pasta so that's i think i think as much as the budgets are going up and the standard yeah. is going up it has to be accompanied by the audience's imagination and yeah, dude, like the audience have to get it. Yeah. I think South Africa is stuck in a loop. It's either we are telling them what we like or they're assuming that we like whatever sure. they're showing us. Yeah. And there's obviously a niche of us who are like, some people have Apple, some people are on this and that. Some yes, 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 yes. So not everyone is being forced to, to, to consume the same thing. Absolutely. But it's like, dude, yeah. you know, there's a whole bunch of reality shows coming out of there's, there's options there's, there's options, options. I, I, I mean uh, for, for instance for me growing up it's either you go to the cinema yeah you go to the park mm. where half of the swings are broken yeah or you go to watch soccer 
Got you. That was the only option. Yeah. And 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 I'm loving the fact that I'm seeing more and more people going back to the cinema. Yeah. I mean, I mean uh, COVID decimated in, uh, literally the arts, mm. including people going to the movies. Yeah, absolutely. But going to the movies is slowly coming back because I believe some movies have to be seen on the big screen first. Yeah. Yes, you can own it. Yes, you can stream it. But you've got to have that experience. But you still have to feel like I heard a piece of glass fall here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I know I heard, I heard yes. it was here. Yes. Do you go to the c- c- cinema? Yourself? Yeah, I do. I do. But now you're right, right? We're having this conversation where it's like, now I'm also scaling these yeah. things first by the trailers. Like, mm, is this a cinema worthy movie? Yes. Or can I just watch this at home? Exactly. Right? Uh, yeah, but I do. I do. What is the last thing I watched at the cinema? Woman King. Yeah. That's For obvious reasons, you you went to work. I was like, let me go to work. Everyone said I'm on this thing. Let me go. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are these guys talking about? Eh? Yeah. But yeah, man. Oh, I'm I missed I missed uh, Maverick, Top sure. Gun Maverick. I mean, mm-hmm. that's like you got to just watch that in the cinema. I heard I heard about that. Yeah. And I missed that. I missed it myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird, man. But I think the cinema also has to elevate. You feel me? There's an offer us more. Has to offer us more. What, I think. What a massage! What do you want? foot massage. I like it. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> I think. I think movies should start at IMAX. Oh yes, 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 yes. Don't tell me about a screen. Sure. And sound. Sure. Yeah. Mm. So I mean, give me more. Give me more. Sure. Because now we can you see that it's being. It's almost equal. Mm, it's mm. like, okay, it's bigger screen, sure. seats. Sometimes even that experience is not nice when you're with a bunch of people. I'd rather watch it at home. Mm, mm. Like for us now, you see, uh, it's tough now yeah. to go. So I don't know why I said it at home. What are you working on that hopefully we can watch on the big screen one day? Or at home even. Is there anything you're working on currently? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm working on a, one of my biggest projects okay. ever. Number one again. Yeah. It's a tough prank. <laughs> <laughs> so where can we watch this? Um, it's going to come out on the... On the um, am I allowed to say these things? Sorry, I'm say saving it. through say my it. mind. No, yeah. say it. It's fine. What is this? Uh, YouTube? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, it's everywhere. Everywhere? Yeah. Okay. YouTube and podcast uh, networks. Okay. I've yeah. got a Netflix show coming out soon. Netflix show. Yeah. Okay. It's still a film. Okay. And, and um, who else is in it? Ah, you see now, now you're putting other people's names. Ah, Bonko. Okay. Bonko and Netflix. Are you a steering? Are you co steering? Nah, I'm the boss. Are you the bus driver? The boss. Ah, so you're the you're the taxi boss. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. I'm the boss. Yeah. Boss number one. Sure. In fact, it's going to be like Netflix presents. Okay. Bonko. Oh, wow. In this movie. Oh, wow. You feel me? Jeez, bro. Bro, it could have been Bonko. It's on Netflix, yeah. this movie. Sure. It's there. Yeah. And then I'm busy shooting one right now. The chances of you and wifey being in the same movie? We were on How to Ruin Christmas. Yeah. Um, I hope so. Things, things. Do, do you enjoy working with her? Or do you yeah, enjoy just I'd love it, dude. I mean, we have so much chemistry. Sure. Preparing. No, I saw you guys walked in together. Yeah. Jeez, they're so in love. Yeah, I'd love to. And it's... I think it will challenge us if we have to be in love. Sure. Yeah. But isn't there danger in blurring the line between the actor, the character, and it's a person I'm in love with? Like, with, with colleagues or with my wife? No, with your wife. No, it's fun, dude. I mean, dude, we're married, so yeah. like... We're you won't even need an intimacy coach. <laughs> no, it's like, let us show you. In fact, please leave the room. <laughs> Just shoot and leave the camera. Yeah, leave the room. We'll do the rest. Leave it on the, leave the 40 over there, right? Leave the 50 there. We'll have a roaming camera. Tom can use a roaming camera. Yes. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to, to, I mean, our creative juices. Mm. Yeah, we're the same. Sure. We're the same. Oh, please cast us. Does she go everywhere with you? Or is it simply because you guys are in between roles right now? Yeah, in between roles, got more time. Like I always say, if I'm not working, I'm spending time with my wife and my fam. It's amazing, bro. Yeah, dude. So it's what, a beautiful thing. If, 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 when I'm when I'm not in a character, yeah. uh, I really want to spend most of the time with with 100%. my wife. Yeah. And yeah, we do. We're inseparable. Brother man, we are out of time. I'm, I'm going to have to separate from you. <sighs> but um, thank you so much for 
your gift. Thank you, sir. Um, because for a lot of people, the movies, um, watching some of our favorite stars on screen, that's an escape that you need. Yeah, man. But also, it's you needing to see people like you being portrayed either positively or in big roles. Right. Like, for instance, we do a new Netflix a movie that's about to come out. Yeah, so man. we need people like you to remind kids out there that, listen, it's, it's happening. Yeah. Especially for Africa. The world is watching Africa right now. Absolutely. And it's for us to drop the ball. Yeah. It's for us to drop the ball. It's yeah. on us. So only we can ruin it for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's all happening. It's all happening all at the same time. And I think this is about trust, faith. Yeah. Trust in the process. Sure. It's bigger than us. Yeah. So, yeah, man, just be prepared. Great Keep time going. to be African. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Bonko, thank you so much, brother, man. Thank you, Fred. Nothing but love and respect for what you, you do, for your craft, for for everything. And for your uh, your accent from the south. Shots, my I wasn't, I wasn't expecting an accent from the south, bro. Shots in the south. Shots. Thanks, shots, Fred. Bro, appreciate it. All the best with this. Thanks, thanks for hanging out with uh, Wow, What a Weekend. We're part of the Africa Podcast Network. You can email waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Shout out to Pezulu Works for the amazing editing and cinematography. Audio engineer, Otis De Flor Fraser. Our guest, Bonko Koza, Fezile Jamini, and Wazi M. Kunene. Uh, show producer, Kelet Zomudisa Gang. Creative director, Kuvesh Mohan. We will see you again next week. Have a great week in spite of yourselves. This is... Wow!